Okay. This video is sponsored by your Channel 8 news team. Pepper Love, Woody Gold, Mojo, and Ed Lake. Now, I want the video, which is probably what you want to see in the first place. But sorry, I couldn't help being stupid for a second. All right. This lesson is on average and instantaneous velocity. Uh, the best way to start this off is what, from here on, we at Ramburn will call the Josh Brock question. And Josh, if you're listening to this right now, why? Why did you do this? So, we'll start off here at some point. We will travel 50 meters. Uh, we'll travel 50 meters. And when we get to this point, we're going to actually turn around and come back 25 meters. Now, let's first talk about the difference between average velocity and average speed. Average velocity, average velocity, true average velocity is nothing but your change in displacement over your change in time which is written as XF minus XI over ooh, time final minus time initial. Sorry about that horrible looking T right there. That's a little bit of a boo-boo. But anyway, and a lot of times I'll be honest, I just write X over T. But anyway, we'll do more on that later. Uh, what we have to look at is what exactly X means. There's a difference. X does not stand for distance. X is actually known as displacement. And there is a difference between distance and displacement. So, let's take a look at this problem about what's going on. We're starting, we'll say, at this point. We'll call that our X initial over here. We travel 50 meters, get to this point, turn around, and come back 25 meters. So our X final is here. Displacement is not how far you've traveled. That's 75 meters. Displacement is where you are now compared to where you started. So in this problem, our displacement is only 25 meters. So there's our displacement. So let's say that our average velocity then would be in this problem 25 meters and let's say that it took this person five seconds to make this trip. We'll say over five seconds of time, which gives this person an average velocity of five meters per second. Now, speed is not something that we're going to see that much in physics. Uh, we will. I'm not even going to write an equation for speed. I'm just going to say average speed is equal to distance over time. Because that's what speed is referring to. Speed is simply referring to distance over time. So in the case of this problem, this person traveled a total distance of 75 meters in a time of 5 seconds, which means in this problem, 75 divided by 5 is what? 15 meters per second. That's the difference between average speed and average velocity. Velocity is just concerned with displacement. If you read a question and ask you for average speed, that's your distance. You have to be careful. And the reason why we remember this question, we were once in a competition where someone went 20 meters and traveled 10 back. And the question was for average velocity. Well, 20 meters and 10 back means that your displacement was only 10 in that problem. So you should have had 10 over the unit of time in it. And so that's where we still get that. Uh, now we can, and y'all haven't really learned how to do vectors a whole lot as of yet, but we could take a look at a real simple type of vector. Uh, a simple vector might look like this. And again, we haven't even really went over vectors and scalars yet. But we could say somebody drove this way. They drove due east. Let's say that they drove this way for 20 miles. 
And when they get to this point, they then travel, and we're going to make this one real simple. They travel 10 miles at an angle of 30 degrees, and this would be uh, north of east. So in this problem, let's say that they did this, let's say that they did this in a time of one half hour. Let's say that was our time in this problem. So, what was this person's average speed? Their speed would have been equal to the distance over time, which would be 30 miles over total time, half an hour. And so all we'd have to do is say that your average speed is 60 miles per hour. Now, that is speed. There is a difference if you remember. Velocity wants to know displacement. Where did you start? This is where you started. We can call this our x initial over here. Where did we finish? Our x final is all the way over here. So in the case of this problem, what we're actually looking for is this. We're looking for this resultant displacement in this problem. Now, this problem's not hard. A matter of fact, I want you to take a look. You don't know how to do vectors yet, but if you kind of pay attention, hopefully you can see that the triangle is formed here. So all we have to do is 10 miles times the sine of 30 would give us the opposite, which would be 5 miles. And 10 times the cosine of 30, cosine of 30 is 0.866, so this would be 0.866 times 10, so this would be 8.66 miles. So what we've got is a triangle, the base of 28.6, it's 5 over here. So all we have to do is come back 28 point do Pythagorean 28.66 square plus 5 square take a square root of the answer 29.09 so this is how you would do it with a uh, average velocity when you have an angle like this so your average velocity would be 29 miles over half an hour, which I know is not going to be too much, 40, be 58 miles per hour. That would be our difference between these two problems. Of average speed, you're just looking for your distance over your time. Average velocity, technically you're looking for displacement over time. All right, let's do one of the examples from the book now, if we can. This is going to be our example C in the textbooks that we're using in class. Example C says, a motorist drives north for 35 minutes at 85, stops for 15 minutes, and then continues traveling north for 130 kilometers in two hours. All right, this is one of the most basic types of questions we can be asked. We need to be able to do this problem. I'll hold it right there if you need to read it for a second. Hopefully you've got that recorded now. All right. So let's take a look at this problem. I'm going to start it right here. You might as well get used to seeing me make lots of little drawings like this. We've got a person that drives north. And it says that they drove north for 35 minutes. So in this first section, we've got 35 minutes. And they drove at a velocity of 85 kilometers per hour for the first leg of this journey. They then, when they got to this point up here, they then took a break. Time for their break of 15 minutes. And then they proceeded to drive 
Then they proceeded to drive 130 kilometers, so they drove a displacement, we'll call this X2, of 130 kilometers, and they did this in a total of two hours. So we've really got three times in this problem. A time for the leg one, a time for the brake, and a time for them to drive leg number two. Now, this problem first wants you to find the total displacement of the problem. So it wants you to find this total distance. Well, we already know the displacement up here. It told us they drove 130 kilometers. So we need to find the displacement down for this part. Well, it already told us time and velocity now, we do have a conflicting uh, set of units here that we'll need to resolve. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just change 35 minutes to hours. It's going to be just a little over a half. So 35 divided by 60, got 0.583. We'll just say 0.58 hours for our problem. So 0.58 hours have elapsed. So here, we've got time, we've got velocity. Basic equation, velocity is nothing but displacement over time. So all we have to do is this be 85 kilometers per hour equals x1 over 0.58 hours. So 85 times 0.58 We've got 49.3 kilometer displacement for this first leg. All right, so now we know everything we need. This is 49.3 kilometers. The second leg was 130. So if we are looking for X total for the trip, we're going to have 179. 0.3 kilometers. Now again, this is a very common question for us to get asked. Now, this was the answer for part A. Part B of this question wants us to find the average velocity for the trip. If you work a problem and you're asked to find an average velocity like this for the entire trip, so I'm just going to say average velocity for the entire trip. Y'all, that's easy. All you're going to have to do is tell me what is the total displacement for the trip and divide that. Now, this is where it gets people messed up. Divide that by the time total for the trip. So in this problem, it wants you to find the average velocity for the trip. That is total displacement over total time. This is one of those basic questions you got to be able to do. Well, your total displacement was 179.3 kilometers. Your total time, on the other hand, ah, this is where people mess up. Your total time was the time for leg one, the time for him to take the break, and the time for leg number two of this trip. So you actually had three times in this problem. So when you go to calculate this, it's 179.3 kilometers over 0.58 hours plus a quarter of an hour for the break. It was 15 minutes, and I'm not even writing on the camera, plus the two-hour last section. So that's the way we found this average velocity. So in the case of this problem, we'd have 179.3 divided by, and I'm going to put that in parentheses on the bottom, 0 0.58 plus 0.25 plus 2, 63.3, actually 4. Ah, anyway, kilometers per hour. There's my average velocity for the entire trip. Now, I'm going to take a break and make a part two next. And I'm going to talk about those instantaneous velocities in part two of this series.